Hello? Yes? Do you wear? The clunch pit. The clunch pit. Yes, I know where it is. Right. No, I'm sorry, darling, but it's an emergency. The emergency's me, Gerald, me. I, I just don't know how much longer I can go on.
Monica. Good morning. Over there. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. What cap you dropped in? I thought I knew a shortcut. We've got Lorimer with us. Joy, a joy. Two experts to tell me what I already know. Yeah. Manual strangulation late last night or early this morning. Good morning, Harrison. Morning. I haven't even been able to go through a bag yet. I'm sorry. Now, quick as you can, Doc. I hope you'll give this priority, Dr. Lorimer. Of course, undetected murder always has priority. Oh, thank God for that. I'll get the exhibits to the lab by nine. Except you're going up to London today, aren't you? Is that much of an open secret? Of course. We in the CID can't wait to hear you confirmed as director of the lab. Would be logical, I agree. Inspector Doyle? Yep. She's dead, all right. In you go, lads. She hung on to it as she died. I haven't seen catabolic spasm in a case of manual throttling before. I'll give you time of death and so forth when I get on the table. When will that be? Well, I'll try and book a place for this afternoon, if not first thing tomorrow, all right? Today would be better. Yes. Come on, in you come. Come on. Come on. Looks as though she went to a disco in Ely last night. I know your mind's on higher things, Dr. Lorimer, but I want Chummy you did this quick. Yeah, I realise. You do? I was in the lab yesterday about the Guttridge case. The report isn't finished. Your young assistant, what's his name, Bradley, told me. Said he was working on a defence exhibit. You came up to the biology department? Mm hmm. Inspector Doyle, we aren't a police lab yet. Even if you do walk in and out as though it were your own kitchen. Bollocks. We do examinations for the defence, if they submit in the approved way. You'll get your report, but I decide priorities. And in the future, if you have any questions, ask me, not my junior staff. You were tied up. And unless you're invited, keep out of my laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> Lorimer reckons he's got the job already. His lab. <laughs> Touchy as a bitch on heat. Well, he lives for his work. Don't we all? I understand that Dr. Lorimer has been shortlisted. The interview's today. I imagine he stands a very good chance. He's managed quite well as deputy. Old Dr. Mack used to welcome us at Hoggart's. Had this funny idea. Forensic was there to help the police. I imagine it'll work out, Inspector. Yes. I knew her, by the way. She was a, a ward maid at the hospital, and she got married. And after the wedding party, she put a load of booze in and got everybody drunk on her ward. She had a nice sense of fun. See you later. She does. 
daddy wouldn't ever leave, would you? Whatever happened? Well, what could happen? I'll come back to bed and I'll sit with you for a while. If this Clunchpit case ties in with the other killings, look, I know what's in your mind. It'll take me up to Hoggart's. So there was another reason why you suddenly asked me to lunch. It was to pick my brains, wasn't it? About one of your candidates for the Hoggart's job. Thank you. Good afternoon. I thought they'd keep us in separate cages. The name's Woods. Howarth. How do you do? Howarth. Max Howarth? Yes. I've heard of you. The Bruch Institute. That's right. I suppose others will join us. They can't be interviewing just the two of us, surely. One more, I understand. Do you mind if I? Oh, I'd rather you didn't. August is special for me. You know, I started my career there before the war. All we had was wet chemistry, test tubes and beakers. And no girls employed, because it wouldn't have been decent for them to be concerned with sex cases. Hargitz was old-fashioned even then. I don't mean scientifically. As a place, it was stood apart from the rest of the service. And now, I've got to see it updated before I retire. Retire? You'll be head of the forensic service till you die. I hope not. I'm getting old. Some of the changes don't entirely suit me. All this emphasis on management, whatever the hell that really is. Hoggets. There's fans. Freezing winters and spring even worse with a wind from Siberia. <laughs> the staff used to leave in the first month. I'll stay on forever. So, who's going to get the director's job at Hoggets? Hmm? Job's rally between a chap called Howarth and uh, the resident PSO, Edwin Lorimer. Lorimer? Oh. He's been the acting director, hasn't he? Had a bit of trouble with him, didn't you, in the M4 case? He was a southern lad, then. He uh, filed it up in court for you, didn't he? You twist my arm before lunch to get me to leave my job and join one of your devious committees. Now you invite me afterwards to put a boot into one of your candidates for the Hoggart's job. I know. Blame a lifetime in the civil service. Was I naive to suppose they'd start on time? You won't be drawn. A lot of I know. He was painfully honest. He expressed a true doubt. Defence pounds, judge misdirected. It was a long time ago. Mm. Anyway, if a case falls apart because of a forensic detail, it's not been properly prepared. Now, who told me that? Leaving aside Hoglitz and this candidate of yours, Lorimer, this committee of inquiry you're setting up, you want me as its hatchet man, right? Yes, chief investigator. And for how long? Two years? Yes. Hmm. Now, look, I'm a working policeman. I've got four connected killings, maybe five with this punchback case. Of course, it's as a working policeman, I want you to second it to us. You've seen the bad press forensics been getting. It's even been suggested that the Official Secrets Act has been covering up inefficiency, lies, jealousies, God knows what. I'm counting on your help to stop this rubbish being written about us. How's your dream? She wouldn't mind me moving sideways, I must admit. Fine, talk it over with her, splendid. Sir Charles, I'm not a committee animal. It's 
quite a thought, you know, with a baby coming along. You'd see more of them both. Don't push me, you old bugger. We're very competitive now, they tell me. If you don't move forward, you'll fall back. I may like you. Chair. But not enough to dance to your tune. Or anyone else's. Uh, excuse me, can I use that phone? Thank you. Yes, hello. Um, extension 4623, please. Chief Superintendent Dell, please. Yes. The editor of this thing seems to be fixated on Cocker Spaniels. Two articles, five photographs, four letters. They're prone to hysteria. Oh, yes, I see. Yes, so I've heard. I once had a Cocker in Africa. I tried to play with a puff header. Do you want this job? How can I be sure until I've had the interview? Oh, I see. You're interviewing them, not the other way around. <laughs> Well, let's say each side is looking at the other. I take it you do want the job. Very much. But then I know the laboratory. It's very old-fashioned, sir, I hear. White elephant. In need of a firm hand to bring it up to date. That's what appeals to me. I'd like you to go in next, Dr. Hunt. Ah. They didn't mind my pipe. How many of them? Five. The white-haired so-and-so. Second right is the one to watch. Without actually saying so, he made it quite obvious that I was a floater. preliminary interview that you should be appointed to Hoggart's laboratory for a three-year term, renewable or not, for a further two years. That strikes me as rather modest. Can you expand on that? <laughs> Actually, it's the reverse of modesty. I wish to be judged on my performance. There's a lot to be done at Hoggart's, especially the move to the new building. Do you regard this job as a challenge, Dr. Hull? It's not the word I care to use. I've never been an insurance salesman. How do you view your lack of forensic experience? With equanimity. All scientific disciplines are essentially the same. With the Bruch, my work was at first in research, now it's administration. Do you feel as a pure physicist you peaked? I think so, yes. There are others now in my field, younger, brighter, better. What Hoggarts needs isn't another scientist, pure or impure. What it needs is a new manager. At the same time, I do believe that I know what makes scientists tick. Yes, that's relevant. Hmm. Of course, you'd be taking a drop in salary, some 600 a year. I've never worked for money. I don't need to. You know, you were right about Sir Charles. He does want me seconded to a home office investigation. Well, I said no as emphatically as I could. Yes, yes, I know. I'd better be on the phone to you by tea time asking your permission. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, um, 
Yes, yeah, so I'll get up there as quick as I can. Check out this clunch brick killing. Yes, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. To those that have shall be given. I beg your pardon? I'd like you to go in again. Oh. Pretty obvious why, sure. My congratulations. But before anybody else, hoggets. Pass your dad the butter. Mum, did you know that every human being is unique? Hmm, of course I do. Stands to reason. It's only one of every person. You're you, I'm me, your dad's your dad. I meant biologically. You see, no two types of blood are exactly the same. We had enough systems we could distinguish them, all the blood types. Even with a dried stain. Well, it's dried blood that's difficult. The blood's fresh, we can do far more with it, Mum. You can. Funny job you got yourself. Checking bits of body, dirty clothes. Hope you wash your hands properly after, and before you come home. It isn't like that, Mum. All the exhibits arrive in plastic bags and pots with identifying tags. Well, they're ever so clean, hygienic. I sign him in. It's called Continuity of Evidence. A reception were responsible for the integrity of the sample, Inspector Blakelock says. You see, forensic science isn't just helping the police discover who's guilty. We help clear the innocent, too. Oh, people forget that. We had a case last month. 16-year-old choir girl accused a vicar of rape. Brenda! Oh, Mum, I'm explaining. He was innocent. I should hope he was didn't look like it. Only he was lucky. He was a secretor. A what? Well, he secreted his blood group and all his body fluids, and that saved him. Not everyone does, Mum. So Dr Lorimer was able to examine his saliva and compare his blood group with the semen stains on the clothes I of... I think that's enough at breakfast, Brenda. It's forensic science. Even so. Is it that, Mr Lorimer? Dr Lorimer, he's a PhD, Doctor of Philosophy. Well, whoever he is, is it him who's got you on to taking the extra A-levels? Yes. He thinks I can do better than just clerical officer. He says with another A-level... But he got you one in geography. Isn't that good enough? No. It has to be biology or chemistry if I'm to be on a scientific grade. And then I could work my way up, he says. He's ever so nice to me. But people don't like him, think he's too strict. But really, he's just shy, I'm sure. Looks as if you'd better watch your step with that one. Mum, he's old. Forty or fifty, even. He's the acting director. See, he's really in charge of the biology department, but... Hey, we may know today. What? Went down to London yesterday to be interviewed. He may be the real director by now. He was shortlisted, you see, by the Home Office. Oh, I hope he's got it. He deserves to. He works ever so hard. Harder than anybody else. Are those my sandwiches or Dad's? Yours. I put you an apple for afters. That's how the exhibits come. Oh, don't get them mixed. Go on. Bye. Bye. Go back 
to bed. You can get in another hour's sleep. I can't sleep. Well, put your dressing gown on. You'll catch cold. Is something wrong? No, it's nothing. Don't take any notice of me. You won't be fit to work. What's funny about that? I'm not fit for work anyway. It's no good, Sue. It's the job, isn't it? Yes. I'll have to give it up. Has Lauren have been getting at you again? He never stops. I can't do anything right. He's got me in such a state. But Cliff, you've always been good at your work. At your last lab you got on so well, you got that early promotion. Yes, well, Lorimer thinks they were wrong. He says I should have stayed in the lower grade. He's probably right. No! You're too conscientious. You worry too much. I'm slower than the others. The analyses always take me that much longer. That's because you're so thorough. I can't even do the simplest of tests now. I know he's always watching me. You don't know what it's like. My hands start shaking. You mustn't be so vulnerable. He started to check all my results. Everything I do. He'll do it again. He'll work late tonight. And make sure the rest of the biology department knows why. Cliff, what other job could you get? Nothing's paid for in the house. You've got to stand up to him. I know you'll be all right. Let's see. What is this place? The planch bed. What's that, a quarry? Yeah. And this is her? Yeah. And was she known to you? Well, she's not on our records. What about the post-mortem report? Rather depends on Hoggett's. Yes. I don't know why, but this doesn't look right to me. I thought it would save you reopening for me. Make mine sink alike, Brenda. Also, I wouldn't see if I remembered. What? The order. Which lock first? Ah, well, the first one is... Oh, no, don't tell me. Go on, then. That one. Put to jiggle it around a bit. Mm -hmm. Then? Then the bottom. And then the top, because that's a security lock, and you do it last, right? Right. Dr. Lorimer says I ought to find out everything about how the lab works. So me encourages. I'm sure if I did that, all the alarms would go off, wouldn't No, they wouldn't. A correct key disconnects the system. Right, in you come. I'll put kettle on. Put 
go. Mayday lot. But even so, 68. Some people will celebrate anything. We ought to be here this morning. If Dr. Norman have got the job, we do hope so. Could be in the minority there, Brenda. Hello, we're off. Morning. Morning. Thank you. You got in there. Ah. All right? Don't tell me. Clunch pick case. Right. He's a bit of all right. Is that my tea? Yeah, I've been there some time, then. On this with Tom Doyle, are you? Yeah, who else? Is he still eating razor blades for breakfast? <laughs> when he's not chewing me. Anything yet on yesterday's exhibits? Do you mind some? I'll get certain you while you're away here by, you know. Stall of bananas. So Mercer. We've got Scotland Yard here. Right. See you. Drive carefully. Right. Boyfriend's clothes. Now, register it to biology under the Clunchbit Muddington reference, but give it a subgroup number. With a red immediate, like yesterday. Right. Priority. My mum thinks it's a sex maniac, did it? Mothers always do. Oh, it could be. Flashy suit. Look at the stripes. Need a separate file. August Lab. Not little. Anybody upstairs yet? No. Not even Mr. Bradley? No. Nothing down from documents, are they? Well, that's funny. Mr. Bradley always get in ahead of Dr. Lorimer. Poor little blighter. Well, well now that... Well, that's up to you, isn't it? Right. And it was quick. I must have ride out him at the station. Who? Doyle. Morning. Hello. I always seem to coincide with the blunt instruments. Last month. Our caretaker's on his way, so take care. Good morning, Inspector Blakelock. Brenda. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Dr. Larimer. I'll be in my office. Just hold the fort a minute, will you, Brenda? So, oh boy. Inspector Doyle. He was on the phone a few minutes ago. He was in his usual mood and said he'd be right over. I see. Thank you, Inspector. Just thought you would know. No, no, Tom, go on. Call down, all right? I'm doing what he said. Inspector Doyle. You said come direct to you if I have any questions. Well, I have. <sighs> Very well. All right, Blake. 24 hours and not a single result. The lab got the girl's clothes at nine yesterday. The boyfriend's letter from a handbag at 10.17. And Dr. Kerrison's post-mortem samples by 4.20 yesterday afternoon. He pulled his finger out. Now, look, Inspector Doyle... Now, we've I all got on with it. Why can't Hoggins? You've just had the boyfriend's clothes delivered. Well, you'd better, better give those priority. Don't tell me what I'm to give priority Why not? To. He did it. We've got his statement. He's confessed. And your results are going to confirm it, right? We've got his prints on the car. 
There's clunch clay on his boots. And with forensics corroboration, that's it. So goodbye, our governor's fancy theory. It ties into the Met's backseat strangler. He's got some senior idiot from London. Which reminds me, how did you get on in London? Get out. Oh, no, go with it. Too bad. Who's it to be? I told you to go. Sure. But you get those results by lunchtime, or I'll make my complaint official. To the new broom. Benji, take over. Good morning, Inspector Doyle. You've never been too good in the witness box, have you? Cheers. The car you say you saw in your first statement was parked over here? Just about, yeah, I see. Um, come on. Can I call you right? Yeah. It was facing this way? Yeah. And you were coming from over there on your motorbike, looking for Linda? Yeah, I was, yeah. Could I have my overcoat, please? You didn't see the driver? No, he switched his headlights full on. He took off straight at me. I see. Um, thank you. In your second statement, you said there wasn't a car at all, and you weren't looking for Linda because she was with you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you took her along there? Yeah. Right. OK. Come on. Are you OK? Yeah. Come through here? Yeah. Good morning. So you went down this path? You and Linda? I reckon. And then you got to the car. Now, come on. Come on, right. I saw her sitting in the back. <laughs> you got yourself in a real muddle, haven't you, Roy? You made me say it. Who did? That inspector. He said he'd drive me home. When? After I'd been at the station. But after you made your first statement? Yeah. Took me to old Jennings bar and said I'd better tell it to him straight or else. Yes. I else he'd straighten me out. I see. <laughs> Only he didn't hit me. Didn't he? No. I kept seeing Linda. I knew I touched her and the car. She was still warm. He kept telling me I'd made it all up about the car and that other bloke and everything. I loved Linda. And after that? Okay. We went back. He said I was to tell it the way I told it just to him. Only this time he had a policewoman writing it all down. And then you signed it? Yeah. He took my clothes for testing, he said. <laughs> I didn't do it, honest. I believe you, but it's not as easy as that. I find clay and your clothes. Come on. And they've got your sign confession. It's all right. Come on.
Good morning. Bradley's helping you on the clunch pit case. Yes. You asked him to. Before you went to London yesterday. Sorry, I did, James. <laughs> Dr. Kerrison's PM evidence is sexual excitation prior to asphyxia. Yeah, to be confirmed, here. Yeah. Apparently unforced. Mind you, Kerrison tends to work rather hurriedly at times. A little too eager to please the CID. Now, why do you say that? You've never had any reason to doubt his accuracy? Hmm. Uh, I'm sure the Home Office will establish him as police pathologist eventually. He deserves it, I think. I'll be all right. Home Office moves in a mysterious way. Check them all? Yes, sir. Good. One day, when we're a little less pressed, you should see a case through. You know, see what happens in court when defence counsel won't accept our scientific offerings. I'd like to do that, sir. You checked in the Clunchbit exhibits this morning? Yes, sir. They worry you? A little, sir. Well, the policeman who brought in the exhibit said she was only 19. That's my age. Mm. Well, we have to take death granted in our work. It's a little hard at first, I know, but... Uh, you'll manage. You'll learn to be detached. Yes, I know. That's what science is about. <laughs> it's more than that, Brenda. We uh, formulate our theories and we test them by experiment. But, uh, should those experiments fail, we have to uh, find another theory to explain the facts. And that's the splendid thing, that even when we fail, we uh, take a step forward, we learn something. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry? What about? That you didn't get the appointment. You deserved it. It's a very great thing to, uh, to be a scientist, whatever people say. Um, that's all that matters, Brenda. Try to remember that when you get your qualification. And the neighbor saw the girl's husband return home. Yes, all three, the girl, her husband, and her boyfriend, Roy, quarreled at the disco in Ely, and the husband left early. The girl and Roy stayed and left together. I want to see this PM report reserves judgment and whether she was killed at the clunch pit. We'll have to wait for Hoggins. Morning, Governor. Laura McBlewitt. Uh, Tom, uh, this is Chief Superintendent Dalgleish, Inspector Dorn. Well, how to do? Come down to tell us how to do it? Oh, that's too soon to say. We've cracked it. We've got him. It's all tied up. You assumed. Well, I thought it was a fair assumption, sir. You, you do. do. The defence wouldn't. They'd be onto it in a flash. Not everyone secretes his blood group in his saliva. Yes, I know, but... You've but... never stood in a witness box, have you? Well, I have, many times. And I'm the one who'll be cross-examined on your results, Bradley. Am I supposed to check every single one? If so, I might as well do the job myself. We in the Forensic Service produce expert testimony, hadn't you noticed? And counsel like nothing better than to catch us out. My lud, it seems that even our tame scientists cannot agree. Laughter. You better start again. Work through your lunch break. My God. One day I'll kill him.